Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. This, this segment of the school is, is the body of Christ and it's to teach us what we are, what our role is in the church and it's about the church for the church is not a building. The, a lot of times we like to think that the church is a building where we go on Sunday morning, Sunday night or Wednesday night or where we have camp but that's not what the church is. If Jesus Christ lives in, on the inside of you then you're part of that church, you're part of what makes that church. And I'm going to read it again. Now, you are the body of Christ and members in particular. And you're those members that make up that body. For The Bible talks about the, the ear, the hand, the eye, all being members of the body but are still yet joined to Christ. So that's what we are. We are, we are hands for the Lord. We are eyes for the Lord. We are feet for the Lord. We carry him where, where he should go. If we're obedient and we're willing, we have to be that willing and obedient vessel there's a purpose in the church for everyone don't, don't ever think that you just go to church so that you'll just have something somewhere to go or something to do or a camp to attend that's not why we're here we're here to, def to help us find out to help you find out what your role is in the church of course we must everyone has uh, uh, I've heard brother Scott say it many times everyone has the mini ministry of watchfulness and prayer so that you're watching for the Lord to come, you're praying for the Lord to come, praying for the lost, but we must continue to find out what our purpose is for the Lord. For the Bible goes on to talk about there are some that are pastors, teachers, preachers, prophets, evangelists, and each of those, each of those are different. There are different offices in the church, and we must realize that, and we're not going to get all into that, but we're going to go into, in, in, the, in the first body of God, we're the body of Christ, as I've said that, but in the first body of God, do you know what the first body God had was? It was Jesus. So what was the first body God had? Jesus. All right, now what was the second body? Christ is crucified to pay for our sins. The second body in the, in the book of Acts, in the upper room, he told them to tarry till they be endued with power from on high. And there, the second body of God was birthed. It was the church. And the church, not only was it birthed, but they're saved, or they're in the upper room, there's 120 of them, okay? In the upper room, started out 500, but now we're down to 120. They're filled with the power of God. The fullness of God has come into their lives. Well, they go out into the streets and begin to preach to people and talk to people. And what happens in the streets? About 3,000 people get saved that day. 3,000 people, that's a lot of people. 17 different nationalities are there, and they preach to them, and they're saved. That the church was really uh, added to when the people that were filled in the upper room, they're up here in the upper room like this and just say the gym is the streets down there. We, we get filled with the power of God. God's using us. He's working in our life. We go down those steps and into the gym, begin to preach to people, and they get saved. That's what happened that day. They were preached to, and they got saved that day out there in the streets. So the church was birthed in the upper room, but it grew when the church went out. And we're supposed to be that same way. We're supposed to be that, that, that birth of that second body is supposed to take place in our lives so that as, as you would, you'll go to school, you'll go to your friend's house so that you take the Lord there. He's in you. He lives in you. You represent him wherever you go. We've been taught how we should live, how we should pray. Many good lessons here this morning. Everybody's done a wonderful job. But as we do that, as we go out into that street, wherever we are, Christ is there because Sister Ruth taught on that we're the temple of God. You seem used to it was a building, but now the Bible talks about know ye not that ye are the temple of God, not built with man's hand, hands. So we're, God lives inside of you now. If you're born again and you belong to Christ, God lives inside of you so that wherever we go, Christ may be there also. And as we go to school, wherever you may go, that's where Christ is, see? They went out of that upper room, and just as when they went out of that upper room, wherever you go, that's where Christ can be also, and people can have a chance to be born again. And you say, why is that? Well, the Bible talks about in Christ Jesus was life. And if you're born again, if Jesus lives on the inside of you, there is life inside of you, the power that people could be born again, not through you, but through the power that lives in you, that could shine that light out, that they might see the life of God living in you. Too many times it's an understatement when people just say, I'm saved. But when you hear somebody, I'm saved, they're proclaiming the life of God lives on the inside of me. That's what they're bringing out to you. So whether you see it or not, 
So that's why our actions are supposed to be according. That's why we're supposed to live up the way the Bible tells us because people are watching. It is our responsibility to pertain this body to the way the Bible tells us to, the way God tells us to through edification, being built up. Being built up, you say, what do you mean? Being drawn closer to God, being brought into him so that he can greater possess our lives so that no matter what, he is glorified. That's what our lives are about. And so we must be ready to represent him at all times. We are, we are forever a representation of God to people that are in the world. That's what the church is. And if you have your Bibles, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22. Or you can write it down. We'll read it later. If you've got your Bibles, go ahead and turn there. Ephesians 1 and 22. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. And verse 22 says, given to be all things, or given, put all things under his feet, and gave to him the head over all things, the church, which means Christ is the head, we are the body. We cannot, we cannot do anything without the head, because that's where all our commands come from. That's where our thoughts come from. So we must, the Bible tells us, to have this same mind, which was also in Christ Jesus. So that mind that willed in Jesus, that made him want to do those things, and the Bible talks about even our desires to work for the Lord must come from him. It must come from the Lord. We must pray. If we're not living good enough like the Lord, like the Bible tells you, and you're struggling, you don't know what you may be struggling with, but you pray, Lord, I need help, Lord. I need a greater desire to serve you to do your will to, for you to work in my life. And verse 23 says, which is the body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. We're the body. We're the, the fullness of Christ that's supposed to be made manifest in us. And Colossians 1 and 19 says that uh, it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell so that if the church is going to be right, we have to be in the fullness of Christ. The fullness of Christ has to be into the church. And the church must strive, not as, not as uh, individuals, but like uh, Sister Brittany talked about, she talked about corporate prayer. I mean, everybody gathering together to pray for the same thing, needs that need prayed for, the loss that need prayed for, the backslidden, the people in the church that still need lifted up, that need prayed for so that they're continually drawn closer to the Lord. They need prayed for as well. And not only as the body, when we're at home, we must pray. We must, prayer is just not a time for prayer room. But Tyler Dunn talked about rising early and seeking the Lord. But before you go to bed, you must seek the Lord as well and talk to him and talk to him about your day and talk to him about what he wants from you. A lot of times when people go to pray, it's, Lord, I need this, or Lord, I want that. We've been over that. But sometimes we need, we need to say, Lord, what do you want for my life? For our lives are supposed to glorify God. And what greater purpose could you have on planet Earth than glorifying God? The one who made it by speaking it into existence, the trees, the rocks, everything was made by him speaking it into existence. So what greater, what greater purpose could you have than glorifying him, the great Lord Almighty? That, that's the greatest purpose that you could have. And Christ is the head over that church, as I said, and we must continue. We must abide in him. They talked about abiding in the vine. It's come from him. That's where that life comes from, that life in our lives. And we must all have that. We must realize that there is a purpose for each and every one of us in this life, for it may not be revealed to you right now because you must be trained up in the way that you should go. 